So in this video, we talk about the concept of vector subspace of a vector space V. A vector subspace is basically a subset W of a vector space V. And for the vectors inside the subset W, the zero vector must be inside it. That's the first rule. And the second rule is that it is actually closed under addition in the sense that if you take any two vectors in the subset, after adding them, it is still inside the subset. And similarly, uh, it is closed under the scalar multiplication in the sense that you take any constant and multiply to any vector in the subset. The result of the vector, the resulting vector is still inside the subset W. In that case, if all three axioms are satisfied, we call W a vector subspace of V. And let's take a look at some examples now. For example, I can just look at a single point, which is the origin in the xy plane. This one itself is a vector space, right? And um, I claim that it is um, a vector subspace. Can you see why? Of course, the first axiom is satisfied because it is simply the zero vector. The second axiom is pretty interesting. It is still satisfied. We have only one choice of vector here, right? So uh, it means for any two vector we pick, both must be the zero vector. There's only one choice to pick in this set. And of course, if you add the two vectors, it is still zero, zero, which is of course inside our set S. The next axiom is also quite obvious because for any constant you pick, and for any vector you pick, which is simply the zero vector, of course, when you multiply this, this is still the zero vector, right? Of course, it is still inside the set. So it's pretty obvious. Um, this one is actually a vector subspace of our original vector space, the two-dimensional Euclidean space. And this is actually the smallest possible vector subspace we have because in this case, we have only one single point. It's not even one dimensional. So it's like a zero dimensional object, right? And then we look at another example. So please look at the way I present this example. Basically, I'm set, I'm talking about a subset in XY plane again. There are certain points I would like to look at for this set. These points must satisfy this equation. So it's the condition that must be satisfied by the points we have. And please recall for each point, we automatically get a vector by using the origin as the starting point of the vector. I claim that this case, it is not a vector of space. Can you see why? To disprove it, you must look at the axioms one, two, three here. Some of them must be false. Maybe one or two are correct, but some of them are false. Let's look at them one by one. For example, the first one is actually correct, right? Because the zero vector is zero, zero. And you see zero, zero, um, it's like x is zero by zero. And it means when you do this equation, uh, it is still zero, which means this current point, the zero vector, actually satisfy the condition. It means this zero vector is actually inside the set S2. But uh, some other axioms may not be satisfied. Let's look at the second one. I claim that the second axiom is not satisfied. For example, I can pick uh, u to be 1, 1, and v to be, let's say, uh, 2, 4. And first of all, you have to check that these two vectors are actually in S2. How to check it? Um, you have to check that basically when you do this computation, it must be zero. It is clear because when x is one, y is one, obviously x squared minus y is zero. So it's actually in S. I claim this one is also in S because you can do two squared minus four, which is zero. Of course, both are now in S2, both. And axiom two basically says that after adding the vector, it is not in S anymore. Now let's add the two vectors together. We get the new vector 3, 5. So it is still in the S2. Please ask yourself this problem. Basically, now you have to check the condition. Now x is 3, y is 5, right? So you are doing 3 squared minus 5, which is 9 minus 5, which is 4, which is non-zero, right? Non-zero means the condition x squared minus y equals 0 is not satisfied. It means our current vector u plus v is not in S2 anymore. So please look at the conclusion we have. We actually start with two vectors that are in S2. Now you add them. It is not in S2 anymore, which means that the axiom 2 is false. As long as one of the axiom is actually false, we understand that our current set is not a vector subspace. And let's look at another example now. So let's look at another subset of vectors in the xy plane. And can you show that it is actually a vector subspace? So please understand the logic here. To show a subset is actually a vector subspace, 
we have to show that all the three axioms are satisfied. But uh, like the previous example, to show that a subset is not a vector subspace is actually easier. You just have to pick one example in one of the axioms such that it does not satisfy the axiom. It would be enough. So to show something is true, uh, you have to be more careful. And the first one is obvious. The first one is that the zero vector is actually inside the S3. But I think it's obvious because uh, x plus 2y basically means 0 plus 0 because both x and y are 0 now. So you see it is 0. It means um, this point is actually in S3. The first axiom is done. To prove the second axiom, which means if you pick any random vector in the set, if you add them, it's still inside the set. It is called closed under addition. So to prove it generally, because we are assumed to pick any vector in S3, which means I can pick two vectors. Let's say the first one is u1 and u2 for the x and y coordinate, and the second one is v and v2. And for them to be in S3, we have to start with the assumption that both are in S3, which basically means u1, please look at the conditions, is satisfied. u1 is the x plus 2 times u2 is actually 0. Similarly, the second vector in S3 means v1 plus 2 times v2 is 0. And closed under addition means after adding the two vectors, it is still inside S3. So let's add the two vectors together. After adding them, the new vector is u1 plus v1, comma u2 plus v2, right? So you have to ask yourself, is it S3? Yes or no? Um, the answer is yes. Can you see why? To check that this vector is actually in S3, you have to prove that the x coordinate plus 2 times y coordinate is actually 0. So let's do it together. Uh, now the x is like this. So I put it like u1 plus v1 for the x plus 2 times the y coordinate, which is u2 plus v2, right? So uh, please take a look. Do you think it is 0 or no? Um, I think it is 0 because I can group the first and the third term together plus the second term and the last term together. After grouping them, I think it is 0 because you see this one must be 0 based on the equation 1. This one is actually 0 for the second bracket based on the second equation here. And um, it gives us a sense that this vector actually satisfies this equation, right? x plus 2y equals 0. It means u plus v as a vector addition is actually inside the 3 still. And that's the reason why the axiom 2 is also correct. And you have to prove that the axiom 3 is also correct, but we'll skip some steps because um, as long as you understand the axiom 2 for the closure of the vector addition, to prove the axiom 3 is also similar. So you see when you do the scalar multiplication like this, now the new vector has the x coordinate k times u1, comma the y coordinate k times u2, right? And you have to show that x plus 2y is still 0. But I think it's obvious because uh, when you look at this computation, you see k is like a common factor. I can pull it out. So you have uh, something like that. And please note that this one is basically must be 0 by star, right? So, uh, because x plus 2y is 0, which is the condition that must be satisfied for any vector in S3, it means that k times the vector u is still in S3 because of this. So um, that's the reason why the axiom 3 is also satisfied. In that case, we can call this S3 actually a vector subspace because of the fact that all the axioms 1 to 3 are satisfied. And it's a good point to make the following note here. So now I claim that um, all the vectors of spaces of the xy plane are known. The first one is something we have mentioned in the earlier part of the video. And the single point, the origin, is basically a special vector of space because it is a zero dimensional object. And the largest dimensional subspace, of course, is the whole set itself, which is the whole xy plane. And in that case, it is a two dimensional subspace, the whole thing. And something in the middle. All the vectors of spaces that have the one-dimensional nature is uh, basically the straight lines that pass through the origin. And we have looked at one example already, right? So that was the previous example we looked at. I think geometrically it's more clear because basically you're looking at all points that are staying along this line. And of course this line is what? This line is basically a line like this. 
because this line is like y equals minus x over 2, which is basically this line, y equals minus x over 2. So basically, uh, we showed it already that this one is actually a vector of space in the previous example. It is actually a straight line that passed through the origin. And we also look at another example, which is not a vector space, right? So we have shown it already. It is not a vector of space. And this condition basically means you look at all the points on the line y equals x squared, which is a parabola. And obviously, there's a curve, which is not a straight line. And it gives us a sense that uh, knowing which one is a vector of space is actually quite easy, at least in the case of uh, xy plane.